what we have right here is the brand new 16mm prime lens for full frame cameras from Viltrox. Viltrox have really stepped up their game and brought something entirely new to the market because this is the first 16mm prime lens for Sony full frame cameras and the best part is it stops down to f1.8. Now if you were to jump online and have a look at the market you'll see a flurry of wide angled prime lenses at either f1.8 or f1.4 so this lens isn't the first of its kind but what separates it for me to the rest of the competition is two key elements. The first one is the ability to slap a filter on the front of it and the second one and this is a big one is the price. A lot of wide angle prime lenses will cost you way over £1,000 and I think we all know at this point Viltrox pride themselves on budget friendly lenses and this one meets that criteria because this wide angle prime lens will cost you less than £600. So the spreadsheet of this lens at least sounds pretty good, but how does it perform out in the real world? Well, just so it happens, I was recently out in the beautiful country of Spain and I took this thing with me and I shot a ton of photos and videos with it, which I'm gonna be sharing with you throughout today's video. But let's first off start by talking about the build quality of this lens. The build quality of this lens is pretty good. It feels premium in the hand. It's made of metal, plastics, and of course, a little bit of glass in the middle. And with that premium feel, there is quite a few premium features, starting with an aperture ring, which is quite a common trait on a lot of Viltrox lenses. But what makes this one different is it has a button to turn off the click. So if you're doing video shooting, this could be quite beneficial. On either side of the lens, you'll find an AF to MF switch. Really nice to see Viltrox including this on their lenses. And as well, we also have a couple of function buttons. I believe this is the first time function buttons have found their way onto Viltrox lenses and they're a welcome new addition. As I mentioned, there are two function buttons on this lens. The first one you can customize however you like in the menus and the second one allows you to set two different focus distances and switch between them by pressing the button. It's a really cool feature and works really well but I can't imagine it being useful for most people. Personally, I think it would have been way cooler if you could have had that second function button as another customizable button in the menus, but I don't think it's actually possible to do that because Sony would have to update their menu systems, but you never know in the future. I'd like to be proved wrong on that because imagine the capabilities and the options of having two customizable buttons on a lens. A couple of final things worth mentioning with the build quality. The first one is the lens is weather sealed against rain, moisture, and dust. It has has a big red gasket on the lens mount itself and it has a 77 mil filter thread i've been able to use a step up ring to use my 82 mil filters with it with no noticeable vignetting the final feature you'll find on this lens and i think this is the most interesting one is a display on the top of the lens and this shows you stuff such as how far your subject is from you your aperture are you in manual focus or auto focus? Are you pressing the function button? I haven't personally used it that much, but I reckon for some working professionals who are doing both photo and video, they'll find a really good use case for this. And it's a really cool feature to see on the lens itself. Now, what can I say about the image quality of this lens, apart from it's absolutely bonkers? I've been shooting a lot of photography with it using the 33 megapixel sensor on the a7 IV, and all the results from this thing are razor sharp. Even corner to corner, wide open, f1.8, things look pretty sharp. I've noticed no chromatic aberrations, nor barrel distortion from this lens, which is crazy to think about because it is a super wide lens, and I was expecting to see some. There is some noticeable vignetting in the corners, when wide open and unfortunately Adobe Lightroom hasn't got a lens profile as of yet for it but when they do I reckon the vignetting at f1.8 will be corrected quite nicely. The good thing is when you go up to f2.8 and beyond the vignetting is barely noticeable and is pretty much gone honestly. When you get to the minimum focus distance of this lens and shoot wide open at f1.8 you'll get some really nice blurred backgrounds. You won't get a huge amount of subject separation due to the nature of this focal length but the results do look pretty nice 
nice and that also goes for the renditions of the bokeh on this lens. I see this lens being ideal for photographers who shoot interiors, properties, landscapes, cityscapes and even architecture. I was really able to push it to its limits and it delivered stunning results. Let's not forget to mention as well, it's also a lens that will handle those lower light situations like a champ with that f1.8 aperture. When Viltrox sent me out this lens, one of the areas I was really hoping it would nail was video, especially with the autofocus. Autofocus on this lens is rapid, accurate and silent. It has an STM motor, which basically means you're going to be getting lightning fast autofocus, but you're not going to hear a thing. Autofocus is accurate and I've noticed zero hunting when it comes to photography. The same can be said for video autofocus as well. It can be very smooth or very fast depending on your in-camera settings. It's an ideal lens for filmmakers. And when I was out in Spain, I was also there to shoot a wedding video and I was staying at this stunning, picturesque villa. So I decided to grab the 16mm lens, the A7S III, slap them both on a gimbal and really put it to the test. And of course, if you're a content creator and you want to do some vlogging with it, it's going to be a great choice. With that f1.8, you're going to get some stunning depth of field to your visuals. 16mm is ideal for vlogging. It's nice and wide. And not to mention as well, the lens doesn't weigh that much. It comes in at around 500 grams. So if you're going to be running and gunning with it all day, it's not going to be a huge burden on your arm. Especially when you have like stick arms like mine. As you can tell, I'm pretty impressed with this lens and it is the best wide angled prime lens that I have ever used. Scratch that. It is the only, actually yeah, it's my first time ever using a wide angle prime lens like this and it has set a high bar. I wouldn't say everybody needs a wide angled lens like this. It really depends on where you are and what you need from a lens. But if you're on the market for a wide angled lens and you need something that's good for interior, property, cityscapes, landscapes, astrophotography, content creating, vlogging, any of that kind of stuff, then I'd highly recommend checking out the Viltrox 16mm prime lens. And if you do have any further questions or I've missed anything, please feel free to let me know in the comment section below. But I think the last thing we should do today before ending the video is have a look through the hashtag CP photos and see what you guys have been creating. Kicking things off, we've got this cool shot in London by MXR Visuals, really cool shot here. This one right here of a Mustang by uh, CYtography. These are some really cool, oh, some multiple different cars. Oh, look at them. Very nice car shots right there. Nailed each and every one of them. A very simple, clean street shot here by Captured by James in London. Taxi, person on the phone. It's always a really good composite, and that one is absolutely exquisite. This is a really nice one by Optical Dot Aperture. Two people together walking down this road. Like the, uh, like the soft look you've got to it. I think you've definitely turned down the clarity a bit. I love these sunset tones right here by Dran Film. That is a really nice shot. Was that actually shot on a film camera or was it a really nice preset? Because it looks lovely. We'll have a look at two more photographs today, starting with this one by Catherine London, a Concrete Jungle. Wow, look at that. That is a lot of construction. And it almost looks like it's from a film or something like that. It's very, I don't know why, futuristic. And the final image we're going to have a look at today is i'm going to choose this one because it's nearsville which is near me by black raven photos lovely shot i love this place if you're in the area check out nearsville it's a beautiful little town 
good chippy around that area as well. A massive shout out to everyone continuing to use the hashtag CP photos over on Instagram. If you want the chance of your work being featured here on the channel, get involved over on Instagram. But with all that said, that is where I am going to be leaving today's video. If you did like it, if it was helpful, hit the like button, subscribe, turn on the bell icon so you notify for whenever I release another video. But until next time, create, explore, and inspire. And I'll see you in the next one. Laters.